So now here we have a simple voltage booster, not a very good one at all. Uh, we're a little bit below five volts right there because of the diode drop. You're gonna see when I press the switch, we get the 555 timer to go to a stable mode and to get the transistor to turn on and off. And we charge the inductor by getting current going through it. And then when we uh, cut the power, it pumps that uh, current into the capacitor raise in the voltage. As you can see, it goes very slow, but um, we can change this uh, pocket oscilloscope so that it's five volts per division instead of one right there. So we got about five volts right there, approximately. If I hold this down, we can get up to uh, 15 volts at some point. I have a Zener diode, 16 volt Zener diode to uh, limit the current, one thing to be aware of. So now I'm going to uh, discharge the capacitor with the 1000 ohm resistor and uh, it's gonna go really quick um, because it really does not, uh, doesn't hold much uh, charge right there. And um, there you go. So it is uh, discharged. I'm gonna pluck that capacitor. That is a 0.47 microfarad capacitor. We're gonna look at the circuit in more detail a little bit coming up. This is 0.01 micro ferret so we'll get about uh, 50 times the frequency right there remove the capacitor voltage should uh, stay about the same looks like it went up a little bit um because current can leak through the capacitor but now when i press this there you can see it jumped up really quick right there but again it cannot uh, power a load this is just a, a simple uh, demonstration this could be improved um we'll put that there and press the button and there you can see it went up a little bit but uh enough currents going through the 1k resistor right now to uh, keep it from going up and if you really need a voltage booster just buy one so now let's do a step-by-step -step build of the circuit and by the way wherever uh, you got uh, connections right there that is a actual connection if they were not connected there'd be a little jump in the line right there that's the system i used right there i wasn't gonna draw dots all over um i draw these by hand so computer program does not do that otherwise I would just set it to put dots where it's uh, connected and uh, no dots where it's not connected but yeah we got the 555 timer and uh, we want to keep the output low until I press the button right there so we have a pull down resistor at pin 4 and uh, you need a pull down uh, resistor because sometimes we connect directly to the positive supply so that goes to the negative supply right there it tells the reset pin to stay low and uh doesn't look like uh, that's showing up in the light with the light level there. But yeah, there you can see uh, to the negative supply right there. So now we got the uh, switch. When you close it, you give a high voltage and it lets the 555 timer do whatever else it is wired to do. So um, I also have a capacitor there just in case I kind of slip on it. And uh, this works for um, switch bounce as well. Right when you close the switch, it like bounces up and down and stuff. And um, this will... Uh, charge and keep the uh, high enough voltage to the reset pin to uh, not reset it um, even when you got real brief breaks in the switch there of course it's small value capacitor there and uh, with the 10k resistor when you remove your finger it's uh, going to uh, discharge pretty quick and uh, so it's not going to add to the time probably at all now let's get to the timing I got a 0.47 microfarad capacitor that's uh same value that we got over there so it does say uh 474 on it that's the value in pico farads so it says uh see again the light um says uh 474 right there so that's pico farad four seven and then four more zeros four hundred and seventy thousand pico farad or four hundred and seventy nano farad or uh, 0.47 microfarad right there and uh, a microfarad is one one millionth of a farad so be aware of that now we have that uh, if it was uh, for millifarads it'd be 0 0.00047 microfarad now we have that there it's important that you are aware of the value of capacitors uh, just by looking at most of them are, though are labeled in microfarad so that's kind of uh, 
the world that uh, we live in in the, the micro farads and uh, then we'll plug that in again one farad would be one million uh, micro farads so this is two resistors to charge that point uh, four seven micro farad uh, capacitor that's when the output will be high gets to two-thirds supply voltage that tells the output to go low until the capacitor discharges down to uh, one-third supply voltage but it discharges through that 10k resistor right there so it's going to be high for uh, twice as long as it's low for the most part uh, which you can adjust that um, because the inductor just needs a very brief period of time just enough for current to start flowing then you want to stop and uh, you know it'll uh, pump the uh, charge into the capacitor um, but otherwise you just have uh, current flowing to ground uh, for for no real reason so again this is just a, a test circuit prototype circuit just to get familiar with the uh, basics it's not a, a serious circuit in fact for the uh, timing you saw when I used a 0 0.01 microfarad capacitor it was far more effective I just uh, copied from this one where I had a certain uh, buzz I wanted to get from the uh, passive uh, buzzer right there so um, whenever you learn uh, a circuit you know try to come up with uh, alternative circuits to uh, use it with even if they're not practical just to get more familiar with electronics so we have an NPN bipolar junction transistor we're done with the uh, timing part of the 555 timer so now we can just focus on the output and uh, what it is doing so 2N3904 is what I have right here, but uh, 2N2222, you could just swap it uh, directly, but uh, other transistors may have a different pin layout, but it's an NPN bipolar junction transistor, that's the main thing. Emitter base collector, when you're looking at it from the front, you swivel it this way, now the bottom is emitter, middle is the base, and the uh, top is the collector, pretty straightforward. So we'll plug that in. Now you need just a small amount of current to turn the transistor on fully and um, we are limiting uh, current uh, right there and uh, it's probably about 75 ohms of resistance 220 divided by well it's three of them that's why it says uh, x3 um, but for the amount of resistance they provide because they each pass current as if the other ones don't exist you'll get three times as much current um, out of them as you would get from a single one so that's the same as a third of the resistance so it's somewhere about uh, 75 ohms in resistance and then that's about uh, 25 ohms of resistance this particular inductor uh, right there so um, you know at uh, 5 volts what is that uh, like uh, uh, 50 milliamps of current or something uh, maximum right there so um, we're not gonna worry about that too much just be aware of that so we have the transistor it will turn on fully with just a small amount of current um, so we got a 10k resistor that uh, let's uh, put it behind the transistor now we're going to go to the output right there and uh, so um, yeah I think about uh, 50 milliamps of current will uh, flow briefly if I did my uh, math right and uh, then the transistor is going to turn off and that current is going to flow into the uh, capacitor right there that's what actually uh, raises the voltage if this was uh, really efficient now we got uh, the inductor we're gonna put it up there so it's gonna go through the three resistors as I said before I'm using 220 and uh, so let's uh, go up two spots I think right there and uh, slide them in there so that was 220 now this is the same as like 110 right there because each one is passing current independently and then now it's like uh, I think 75 if I doing my mental math right now we turn the transistor on current flows and uh, it takes a little bit to get going through that inductor it builds up a magnetic field transistor turns off and then it keeps pushing current and that could be bad for the transistor so one thing we're gonna do um, while uh, we are here is I'm going to uh, put the Zener diode over there. You put it reverse bias and uh, actually no first we're gonna do the uh, the rectifier diode and uh, we could do the Zener diode at uh, the transistor as well um, but uh, probably better over here. So we have the anode the side without the bar. There's a little gray bar there maybe a little hard to see so that's gonna be where the inductor is uh, right there and also the cathode of the switch so yeah there we go 
we got her plugged in and then uh, we're going to take the 47 microfarad capacitor right there and again different values will hold uh, charge uh, like smaller values will be able to charge quicker and stuff but they won't store as much if you were powering uh, something so that's stuff to keep in mind if you're building a practical circuit and then for the zener diode instead of going over here because uh, uh, I mean we could um, but uh, I think it's a little bit more messier where we have everything else plugged in so I'll go over there and remember the cathode there's a black band for the cathode you actually use this one reverse bias if this gets up to about 16 volts this capacitor then it'll start passing current through the zener diode uh, right there and we have current limited and uh, so we don't need to limit it anymore um, this will uh, easily pass tons more current than what we have going on there but uh, yeah that is it so 555 timer press the button goes into a stable mode keeps going high and low it's high um, transistor gets conducting and um, it's high plenty long for uh, the inductor to uh, keep passing uh, current as good as it can it limits current a little bit at the beginning but then current gets flowing it builds up that magnetic field you turn the transistor off 555 timer does that automatically that current that's flowing through the inductor will cause a big spark um, maybe destroy the transistor but now we have an alternative path it uh, can push through the forward bias uh, diode right there when the transistor or when the uh, inductor is uh, energized and then uh, so it just briefly pushes up a, a little pulse of current so you got to keep repeating this process the quicker the better and then uh, pumps it into the capacitor voltage rises and the zener diode uh, you know that's where we were measuring the voltage 16 volt zener diode at about 16 volts you know probably a little bit lower it'll trickle current through um, so we may not get to 16 volts with this setup maybe if we go faster um, but in any case uh, that's good to uh, add that for protection this capacitor does uh, self uh, discharge doesn't hold the charge up perfectly right there so especially at this lower pace um, you may get a point where it can't accept any more charges just leaking too much but when I swapped this out with a 0 0.01 microfarad capacitor we saw the voltage shot up uh, real quickly uh, pretty much instantly and so that may fry the uh, capacitor if um, we you know press the switch and didn't have a release uh, right there so now of course um, there's no LED or anything this I don't even think could uh, uh, power an LED I got this a pocket oscilloscope so uh, turn the power for the pocket oscilloscope button it has the cable comes to alligator clips uh, right there and um, so I could I could plug them into header pins but that'd be a little uh, tricky right there so instead what I'm going to do is just take a breadboard jumpers uh, right there and you can uh, clamp onto it and if you uh, find a good spot you can plug it into the board and it will uh, stay stay there and this is a cheap board so um, you kind of got to be careful how you press this in it's softer metal and so it can bend the metal but uh, I give up let's just uh, leave it floating right there hope it doesn't go to the uh, positive supply and then uh, we got the uh, red one right there so we well, I take that. Uh, you don't want to force into the board. You can bend the metal, and then that spot will never hold anything good again. And that that plugged into a spot uh, pretty pretty easy. Maybe it's an angle that I got it. Um, but uh, we're not going to see a voltage, and uh, it popped out because I moved it because the power supply is off. So let's uh, turn the uh, power supply on. We, yeah, we can zoom back here, and uh, or power supply is on. It's not clipped to the board there we go so sorry usually I try to turn the power off when I wire these up so but uh, it can be on that's fine but yeah there you can see capacitor charged again we're at 5 volts per division let's zoom in right there and uh, so if we uh, go to uh, 1 volt per division gotta turn it clockwise it looks like um there you can see uh, that we got it and um, looks like as I uh, press things it kind of went off and maybe we got a brief little uh, couple pulses or something by accident but yeah we put a little capacitor there uh, current can flow through those 220 ohm uh, resistors it's about 75 ohms plus the inductor right there um, but it will lose a little bit because uh, the rectifier down it's 
going to drop about 0.7 volts. And I am unplugged the wrong uh, thing. Let's plug that back in and uh, unplug the resistor. Now should hold the uh, voltage right there until uh, we press the button. And again, with uh, this uh, 0.47 microfarad capacitor, it's going to take some time to go up right there. Uh, but I wanted to show those steps. If you want to look at the uh, final voltage, then you do want to set this, sorry, to uh, 5 volts per division. It's up a little bit uh, right there. It seemed to shift a little bit too um, as I change it there. But yeah, as I hold it steady, there you can see it's working its way up right there. And again, not as effective as a lower value a capacitor there for the timing. This uh, oscilloscope will uh, discharge it a little bit as well. But uh, let's go to... Uh, I could even go to the positive supply, it'll just quickly put it to 5 volts, but yeah, there we go. And uh, so yeah, this should be the uh, 0.1, and I think it may change a little bit when I press it there. You can see it went up a little bit, um, but uh, not much with that resistor. So that's a 1000 ohm resistor, but there, it went up really quick uh, right there. So again, just kind of a simple test circuit with uh, mostly components you already have probably won't uh, have a 10 uh, micro henry milli henry i mean sorry 10 milli henry inductor um like these uh, i got these pretty cheap a whole bunch of them right there and uh, you can combine them that uh, might make it a little bit more effective and we could pump more current uh, through it i think we could probably get rid of these uh resistors because it's got like 25 ohms of resistance I don't know how well it uh, dissipates heat or whatever, but I have just put uh, 5 volts across it, uh, switching on and off, and it was far more effective uh, right there. But uh, this is a safer, uh, just prototype circuit for getting familiar with uh, doing a, a boost of a voltage, even though we're not powering your load. Just buy a voltage booster. They're like a dollar for the cheap ones and they're really effective um so in any case that's it thanks for watching make sure you check out one of the other videos i'm posting the screen and check out the links down below they all help out a lot i'll see you in the next video